a brief history of Interdiac. Idea was uh, that after the collapse of Soviet Union, uh, especially in Eastern and Central uh, Europe, uh, the services in uh, diaconal organizations were only starting. And it um, was uh, understood that there is a big lack of uh, professional training for diaconal workers. And uh, also um, kind of for development of diaconia as a voice of the society, because uh, in um, Mostly in the Soviet space, uh, there was a um, totalitarian regime which said that there is no religion. And um, also understanding of uh, help between people was kind of reduced to charity work, which is a top-down approach. And uh, Interdiac was started by several partners and partners were joining and uh, there are now like 14 partners uh, from Central Eastern Europe up to Armenia, which is like one of the far partners. Uh, uh, who decided to bring together the professional uh, skills to educate people who would like to be trained in diaconal services. So there is uh, an ecumenical development and the relationship uh, in the project, uh, and if yes, uh, in which terms? Yes, there is an ecumenical development and uh, development of relationships, so uh, it, um, you can see it on different levels. First of all, it's like a, a vision level because uh, uh, it, was, uh, it has been already a lot of negotiation uh, and uh, discussion in Interdiac uh, how we understand the ecumenical community and what we want to bring as our vision and uh, it has been uh, a developing process uh, in open discussions with uh, people and uh, this is one layer. Uh, the other layer is uh, uh, that uh, <clears throat> we are very open to invite everyone who wants to study with us and uh, uh, this program was uh, developed in, uh, again in a very open process of consultation of, with our partners from all over the region on a particular theme, it's uh, marginalized use, and all the program is the uh, outcome of uh, this work and uh, more than one year discussion on development of the program, and now we have a delivery of the program, so that's shortly. <laughs> okay, it's a long way. <laughs> it's a long way, yeah. We see yes. that uh, more and more uh, religious organizations and uh, diaconal structures uh, work uh, in the third sector. Uh, sure, it's because uh, it's the, the teach of the Bible, the, what the, the Bible teach, uh, and the, it's a vocation. But uh, do you think there is also a, a lack, a, a hole in the work of uh, politics and institutions? Yeah, um, I think that it's a very complicated question. And uh, because we work over many countries, uh, we can, of course, see it through different contexts. and. Uh, uh, on one hand, uh, we do believe that uh, in um, Central and Eastern Europe, the development of faith-based organizations is very much connected to re-establishing the faith as an uh, integral part of social life. And I think it's very important to understand that because uh, in our context, which was um, um, very much influenced by materialistic philosophy, uh, lack of faith uh, sometimes become very, very uh, vivid. So uh, it's really good to see the development uh, of uh, not only churches but really diaconal organizations who reach out to people and um, really uh, give them a hand in, uh, in their tr uh, problem times. But on the other hand, um, we have a lot of NGOs who are working uh, as well in this sector in um, quite, and it's quite, was quite developed actually. So I would say uh, that uh, there is a reason that uh, the state doesn't do a job and uh, there are people who receive support from diaconal and uh, also uh, uh, civil organizations, but uh, it should be seen as a complicated, uh, a kind of complex issue where um, uh, hopefully it should be developed also as a field of discussion for what is a place for faith in society, where is the place for NGOs, etc., etc. Speaking about your project, um, do you think that uh, people, I don't know if only young people, become neat for similar reasons or there are different causes? So th um, I think the general needs are quite similar, but the context of the countries is uh, always different. Like, uh, 
and I can see from my position like project coordinator of this project it's uh, always uh, important to to see the local situation and uh, especially in this time I can see the differences like because of the situation in Europe so there's some partners they need um, some special supports so and special uh, coordinating things uh, especially in the Eastern Europe so it's kind of the challenges we, but we <coughs> I think success with this uh, integration to these partners in, in the project and I see uh, as very important to uh, still keep uh, and still make the Europe like one co one continent so uh, I see this is really strong side of this project like we try to do not making some kind of uh, wall in the political thinking or something so we really try to integrate all the countries and I think it's also a good opportunity to make kind of dialogue and discuss over the Europe. So there are uh, big differences between countries, but also, for example, from the countryside to the city, you have seen this. Of course, of course, there is, a, I think, different level of the develop, but uh, it's also a good opportunity to uh, share the experience. And one of the, also part of the project is kind of job shadowing. In, it will be in the future, so um, I think it will be also good experience for the, for uh, participants in this program to to see the different approach, different style, and also different technical level or building level on, <laughs> or at the city level and everything. So. And about uh, techniques, uh, what what are the skills, the competencies that? Uh, uh, we have to use uh, uh, for working with uh, marginalized people. So our project, is, the name of the project is Make Change Yourselves. And um, as I mentioned before, uh, we have been uh, kind of developing it as a journey of partners of Interdiac. And the main core to it is that we don't want to have uh, answers uh, for ourselves. We really want to hear them from uh, people who need us and uh, in our project the uh, group with whom we are working are actually young people who are marginalized and um, we were having uh, before um, uh, research about uh, needs of young people and uh, also we found out that not so many young people actually like to call themselves marginalized and uh, how they understand it it's very kind of varies uh, from one person to the other and um, what we were trying to figure out what uh, our services can give them already or gave them over the time that they feel that uh, this is something that uh, empowers them. And uh, many people remarked that uh, they feel in our organizations that this is a safe space, there is a respect to dignity. Uh, there is a feeling of belonging to the community and uh, also they can increase their, so, you know, so a way to say life chances or perspective to uh, have um, a decent life later. So uh, we <clears throat> thought that what we would like to develop in the program is to uh, give to uh, develop the approach which uh, helps um, from the side of uh, social workers or diaconal workers who are with these young people actually every day in their life to help them to feel uh, to get this feeling of empowerment and to work with them to uh, do something uh, what they can say that I have done it, I own it, this is my achievement. And um, uh, that's why uh, we can say that there are some special particular skills which we would uh, name very technically, that they are needed. But uh, uh, on the um, level of our approach overarching, we would like uh, to strengthen this uh, uh, this point because there are so many uh, social services which only kind of uh, treat people as uh, receivers and uh, of the services and never ask them how it really goes, whether it's really helpful, uh, how actually we can think that uh, uh, you grow uh, with our support, not only becoming more and more dependent on us. 
So if you ask about the skills, uh, we are thinking uh, of how a social uh, or diaconal worker can um, uh, actively hear uh, young people, how he, he or she can understand what the needs behind, especially because teenagers, uh, you know, they can show a lot of emotions, but what's there, they often hide behind them. So we were discussing these days how important it is to see what's behind, how important it is to motivate young people, to, uh, especially who come uh, from the ground of difficult families or already had some disappointments and still ongoing challenges in their lives. Uh, and um, of course, we will talk about how to develop the project in a participatory way, how to uh, go through it with young people, etc., etc. But uh, the point is that at the same time, this is a double learning process and we want also to learn from young people how we can help them. So, uh, but I would say, uh, uh, I would call it a special skill, <laughs> which you uh, develop actually in a way all your life. We were kind of discussing that this is something that uh, uh, belongs also to you and goes to your heart and uh, keeps uh, you empowered in what you are doing in your uh, as well vocation in your life. Okay, you have to use uh, a lot your sensibility and uh, to approach them with uh, uh, with sensibility, yes, and um, it's uh, a long pro a pro process and uh, a long project also. Uh, now it's uh, at the, the first uh, level and so good work for, uh, for the future. Um, I, I would like to say it's like uh, already second step. The first yeah. was uh, really um, challenging to develop the program also in uh, consultation with the partners and to involve everyone and to write the project, which is, uh, we, uh, I think we are so glad that uh, we can work together with Erasmus and um, kind of solidify uh, the, uh, the skills in international um, exchange uh, between, uh, between people. But um, uh, on the other hand, um, we have already gone quite, quite, a, quite a path uh, with our partners and um, uh, um, action research was one of them and we have published report. It was uh, two years work and now one year work of development of the program, of the learning program. And now there would be one year work of uh, delivery of the program. So we think it's like a process of learning which doesn't happen uh, in a very short period of time. And we want to, we call it a journey and we want to grow together in that. You have hypothesized uh, a period, two years, uh, one years. And if I can add something, uh, it was a uh, very turbulent time. So we started in the, on, in the online meetings. So it was also kind of a challenge to start this uh, preparation work. We are, we are partners and um, there were a lot of changes. But uh, thanks to also European Union support and, and I think thanks to God, we, we achieved, uh, we can start step out from online meetings and we are already on the second meeting uh, in Italy but it was also first meeting in Finland so we are very happy like it was hard but uh, we are I think good way, good, on a good way to to and I'm very happy to to meet the, the people from the whole Europe so good work <laughs> thanks Thank you.